then that's a clear plastic. So that's good. And that's oh. very strong and then that instantly makes you have to look over there to think, well, yeah. what's going on there? Toru, the articles, Rete Tahi, Nga Tikanga Katoa. And then that'll link up with our cross in the middle. Yeah. Right. Right. right, yes. Okay. Right. You're on to it. So it's just text, yeah? And then up in here you'll do your yeah. beautiful. Yeah. On that cream will be a nice contrast. Because the issues are so complex from a mind point of view, and everything's so symbolic, I wanted to have at least one symbol that overcomes all of that complication. So um, I've chosen the Om symbol, the Sanskrit Om, um, to be in the mouth as the voice of the universe coming through. Sophia's actually used the Om, uh, which is, you know, comes from the San Sanskrit writing. Well, it comes from India and a lot of influence actually in Cambodian culture comes from India as well so it's quite interesting that Sophia's you know added that as well. If you know what that symbol is or if you can get a sense of that um, the meaning of that symbol through the work then um, perhaps you'll feel a bit of that vastness and be able to transcend all these um, these worries because it shouldn't be a worry. We're just trying to educate because we've just been educated too. <laughs> um, so we're trying to share some of that knowledge, but also say, hey, don't worry about it, it's okay. You know, everything's one in the end. So, you know, peace. <laughs> Gross, this one. It's better than you know nothing at all. So we'll just take it and see what it looks like. And this is not going to be pleasant for the folks at home, but. Yeah, you always throw the anchor out and stop and scrape it off the side of the road or do whatever, and um, put it in a bag in the back, and you know rework the feathers later on, and then bury the money later on as well. Hopefully the feathers will be good for creating um, the tufts of feathers that we need for our tent just to give it a bit of um, energy so that the, as people look at it and brush by, the feathers move. <laughs> Conscious that it could be a long night. We want to be just putting it together, the stitching tomorrow and just sort of tying it all together so even that will take probably a bit of time so we are aware I do know what I need to achieve tonight so it's how fast I work really. You know often it's the way you need a lot of preparation but the actual doing won't, won't take too long. It feels really good to be painting actually with a bit of colour. I envision this as the body of the Naga snake like which in, in Cambodia is um, like a symbolic, uh, like kind of symbolizes lots of things. Uh, it can symbolize uh, the universe um, and how it protects people, uh, protects the Buddha. But also on, on the body of the Naga, you know, I, I put like the lotus flower, or my own interpretation of the lotus flower. And over here is like uh, the jasmine flower. Well, jasmine's sort of used a lot. I know in ceremonies in, in Cambodia. Um, and that could be just you know, just for welcoming people because it is dealing with immigration. So I thought, you know, that would be a nice touch to, to bring into the work. I think the willingness of our ancestors to freely welcome people from another country or other countries to come to this land was an act of incredible generosity. But it was generosity based on reciprocity. And the base of the reciprocity were 
the sentiments expressed in the Declaration of Independence, that we would retain that independence. People were welcome to come, but like any visitors, there were rules, if you like, which we expected them to comply with. In the Māori text, the ones that the rangatira debated and actually discussed, and then some signed, in that one, Māori retain their sovereignty. They don't hand over anything to the British, except for one form of authority called kāwanatanga, which is translated as governorship. And looking for what that meant on, that, on the day, we can look back to the Declaration of Independence, he whakaputanga o te rangatiratanga, and kāwanatanga is really clearly a lesser form of authority. It's a form of authority that is delegated by those who hold tino rangatiratanga and kingitanga and mana. They may delegate kāwanatanga to anyone they choose. And that's exactly what they did on that day in the Māori text. So the Māori text affirms tino rangatiratanga remaining with Māori, and the English text says that it is given to the British. So therein lies a terrible contradiction. Did Māori or did they not retain the tino rangatiratanga on that day? And Māori are quite clear they did. There has been progress in the last 20 odd years, and it would be wrong to deny the progress. But the extent of any progress depends on where you measure it from. And unless we are honest enough and brave enough really as a country to measure it from where it needs to be measured, that is that Māori did not give up being a people with the rangatiratanga right to make our own decisions in this land, then the progress eventually will stall. Very cool. Amazing how we're all so different, eh? Just totally different. I got up early this morning at six, so we went to bed at probably about four-ish or just after four. So I'm glad I'm finally painting while Mike's sleeping a little bit longer that I'll get a head start and the bits that I need to attend to. He's going to attend to this bit in here. And we've done all the thinking, we've done all the drafting out and planning and sketching. It's just a case now of just painting and making the painting work as a painting.
people like Pada Machin that reckon that, um, <laughs> that every mark tells a story. And so this is actually probably about, I don't know, I think about half past ten last night. And it starts to disintegrate slowly where I'm actually getting words around the wrong way. Um, I had a kind of like a moment of clarity where I actually suddenly realised that there should be a ngā instead of a te. And so that threw all that out there. So there's a lot of scribbling and over scribbling and rubbing out. But that's kind of like a transcript of, of our night. But it's nice to see it down, eh? Yeah. So what are you going to do down here? Well, it was because they were actually supposed to be framing it. Yeah. But... Do you think we need to? Yeah, and then I've been working on mine upside down. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> well, actually, that explains a lot, Cora. That it explains does. a lot. It explains eh? a lot. Yeah. And I've been on the floor and on the board and on the table. And I've been upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of looking at my fish, thinking, <laughs> did I have them going the right way? <laughs> on canvas um it's tricky it's a bit lumpy you know it's a bit like painting on sandpaper i think and um the colors are not normally what i would choose choose to use at three in the morning it's definitely like oh how can i just kind of cover this thing with some color and go to bed <laughs> i think we left here at four we just decided that um be good to get a couple of hours of sleep because we're not I'm not a youngster anymore and I can't just roll on through and into the next day. Like like um, maybe Sophia and Piat are managing to do. Me and Piat basically went for it straight away. Friday we stayed up until 2am that night. Yeah, so the next night we stayed up all night as well, just um, like literally all night and then the next day. Had five hours sleep for the weekend. <laughs> to ensure everything is finished on time, I had to keep well, both of us had to keep painting. It's a lot of small detail. It looks like it's not much done, but it was actually a lot of work. You know, so it's kind of your mind and your body kind of battling each other, and, and it's quite hard because sometimes you just have to, you know, put it on the line and, and paint through the night to, to have things ready. It's a lot of progress, but just need the, those extra hours to, you know, you know, to complete it. Yeah, oh well. Oh, high five. <laughs>